It's another lockout at Anfield, where every seat for this match was sold two and a half weeks ago, and queues for the cop were forming before noon. Perhaps the most famous face in the crowd is that of Ian Rush, who has a weekend off from the Italian League programme and is looking forward to seeing whether his look-alike replacement, John Aldridge, can extend his sequence of scoring in all ten league games that he started for Liverpool. Aldridge, one of 15 players in this match, who was on international duty during the week. His Republic of Ireland colleague at number five, Ronnie Whelan, will sign a new four-and-a-half-year contract with Liverpool next week, while Mark Lawrenson has to swap the European Championship for the substitutes bench. But Liverpool stress he's not for sale. Queen's Park Rangers are unchanged, with their sweeper system a big factor so far this season. Number four, Paul Parker, is expected to mark Peter Beardsley. Number five, Alan McDonald, has to shadow Aldridge. And number six, Terry Fennick, is the spare man. And if you've not seen Rangers this season, number eight, Dean Coney, came from Fulham with Parker. And number 11, Kevin Brock, was signed from Oxford. Linking up again with manager Jim Smith, who celebrates his 47th birthday today. In 11 visits to Anfield in the league, Queen's Park Rangers have lost 10 and drawn 1. But they did have a good result here in the League Cup semi-final a couple of seasons ago. And a draw today would make sure they stay top. Liverpool, in red, have to win to overtake them. Here's John Byrne. Referee today is Ron Bridges from D-side. Happens to be a family friend of uh, Ian Rush's uh, relatives. And Ian Rush's name already echoing from the cop. There's Brock. Bannister. So, Prince Park Rangers start the match on the attack and force a corner. Brock will take it and McDonald will go forward. So will Fennick. Short to burn. That's Beardsley back there. Brock, burn. Doors. Square to Allen. Fennick. Back again to Neil. Picking up man for man, McDonald has gone over with Aldridge to the far side. Parker staying close to Beardsley. Now can Liverpool unlock the system? They might here. McMahon. Well, the reason it happened was that Beardsley got the better of his man marker. He just edged ahead of Parker to the ball and McMahon saw his chance to come through from midfield. Here's Dean Coney, Allen. Neil, Parker. Fennick. I certainly play the ball around with some measure of confidence, QPR. That was McDonald hitting the long one for Bannister. That was Beardsley, Aldridge. Fennick. Now Brock. Doors. Whelan got the header back. Could be dangerous. Beardsley. Aldridge! And QPR got away with an error. McDonald misjudged the cross from Beardsley. It went over his head and Aldridge seemed taken by surprise.
pony up with Grobola. Now Brock for Rangers. McDonald. Barnes. Neil. McMahon is really well played, and so is that. Parker and Harding on Beardsley. Bannister. What a good effort by Gary Bannister. And Grobola was forced to tip that ball over. Byrne and McDonald in the near post positions. Fennick by the penalty spot. So Rangers taking the game to Liverpool when they can. But here's Beardsley. Aldridge, McDonald away. Venison. Gillespie. Shirts forward here, McMahon, Barnes, and still Parker away, McMahon. Really got the Liverpool fans on his side very early on, John Barnes, after his transfer here. This is Brock, and now it's Beardsley. Good challenge. Johnston to his right, going through the centre. And still Johnston. Great run. Oh, what a good goal. But no, not given. The referee has called the play back. He had already blown, and he's explaining that to the Liverpool players. He had already blown... for a foul as that move built up and the whistle was lost in the din. Johnston ran on to score what he thought was a fine individual goal, but Ron Bridges had already blown and ironically it was in Liverpool's favour. The offence was by a Rangers player as the move built up. So it's a free kick, not a goal. And Barnes takes the free kick and Nickel. Gillespie. Burns touch. And still there. He can either be lucky or unlucky with the advantage. He may wish now he'd let play go on, but it was too late. That was McMahon opening out the play. Venison. Whelan running strongly in the inside right channel. Aldridge pulling away at the far post. He got away from McDonald for a split second. Found Barnes. Barnes cross. Oh, great Johnston! Johnston scores, and this time it counts. From Barnes cross. And Liverpool take the lead. Three minutes before half time. The Rangers, fortress, 
finally broken. Barnes getting away, and he's so good in those tight positions. The cross, a nightmare for a defence. Hard and low, and Johnston rammed it in for his first goal of the season. for Beardsley. Well, Liverpool's goals are coming from all positions this season. A new dimension to their play, particularly on the left wing with John Barnes since his arrival from Watford. Well, it was... Craig Johnston's goal, only the sixth that Rangers have conceded this season in the league, that put Liverpool ahead after David Seymour had stopped most of what had been thrown at him before then. But it was a good first half, high on technical quality, as would befit a match between the first and second teams in the table. Liverpool 1, QPR 0. is boom time again as far as crowds are concerned at uh, Anfield so far this season. They started late here because the sewers beneath the cop there were being repaired, but once the matches began, they flocked into the ground, and today it was full by about 20 past two. That's got to be good for football. Rush takes his seat, just in time to see Liverpool start to build another attack. Well, that was right. <laughs> running on in the end for Beardsley. But at last, Rangers will get possession by a roundabout route. This is Brock. Nice ball by Fennick. Now Byrne. Bannister. It might run on for Byrne if he can get ahead of Hansen. He's gone down, referees his play on, kneels in support. And so is Dawes there. Good save by Grobelar. Ian Dawes met that full on the volley. It was an excellent save by the Liverpool goalkeeper. But it's worth making the point again that the cross from which Dawes struck for goal came from the other fullback. back and Liverpool are pushing the ball around and uh, there's not much action Gillespie now Beardsley Parker got it away oh it wasn't quite for long was it crowd confirmed as being uh, just under 44,000 and they're wondering whether Liverpool can give themselves distance with a second goal here's Barnes not if Parker has his way he's uh, doing a stout job back there Nickel Aldridge done it no the whistle's gone on that far side there was a uh, collision between Martin Allen and Steve Nickel Allen is the player who's gone down 
but it's a Liverpool free kick. Warren Neal protesting. But it's a lonely life for defenders in front of the cop when Liverpool are attacking. And it's also a testing time for them. Barnes with the kick. in this match. In by Brock. And Burns in there. Oh, goodness me, that was Craig Johnston, I think. Well, this is a quite extraordinary couple of minutes. Here's Dawes. Oh, a slice by Gillespie. Bennett coming in. Rangers have just got to go forward now. There's no other policy. Sign that football is back on its feet is the tremendous backing inside the ground today from the two sets of fans in the boss po best possible way. The cop with their legendary reputation for fair play behind Liverpool all the way. And at the other end, tremendous away support today for Queen's Park Rangers, which hasn't always been of quite such volume in the past. Allen again. Now, can he pull this back? Doors! And the fullbacks seem to be on the end of most of what Queen's Park Rangers have created. Here's Johnston. Foul by Brock. Well, this is uh, worth making a point about with the sweeper system that when Ian Doors has three goal attempts in one game, which he has had, it shows that the fullbacks get more freedom when the central defenders are playing the way they are for Rangers. Here's Barnes. Whelan. Well, Fennick. Fennick just losing his poise there. The ball had gone. Queen's Park Rangers concede what I have to say is a rather needless free kick. The 20th free kick. And uh, it's played square to McMahon. And Fennick and McMahon just had a little tussle there as the shot was delivered. There's a slight edge to the match now. Following that uh, second Liverpool goal. Queen's Park Rangers, who adopted the sweeper system, are now going to make a change anyway, because uh, 
two substitutes coming on. This is also a continental idea, really. The two subs coming on. Coney has come off. So too has Neil. And the two men who have gone on are number 14, Gavin Maguire, who will go to right back. And number 12, David Pizzanti, a new name in First Division football. More of him in a second. He's on the ball now, or challenging Barry Venison. This is the Israeli international who Rangers signed from Cologne in the Bundesliga at the start of the season. He had to wait a month for a work permit. He's 25, left-sided player. Nickel. Beardsley. And now Johnston. Oh, Byrne wanting a long time to clear that. He dwelt on it too long. Barnes. And Barnes again. Three. Barnes, the scorer, after a very good one-two with John Aldridge. But the man who takes the blame, really, Brendan Gilmarmi saying, John Byrne, who got caught with, in possession, 20 yards out. The ball was moved around quickly. Barnes to Aldridge, back to Barnes. And that's a great finish. 78 minutes gone. Liverpool 3, Queen's Park Rangers 0. And Liverpool are going back to the top of the first division, having played two games fewer than their rivals. Kenny Dalglish's team exerting their superiority in the second half. Well, the cop saying easy. It may be now. It wasn't for a long time. Oh, Barnes won it. He won it from Brock. He's got Beardsley going to his left. It's still Barnes. That's a fabulous individual goal. and this fine stadium and this successful club. He won the ball from Kevin Brock and my word how he punished him. Ran on, tripped them, jinked his way through and finished in fine style. No wonder he's become such a favourite with the cop already. Listen to them. The game now is well won. Liverpool are 4 0 up, and they're going to give their two substitutes a run. McMahon. He's had two for England and now two for Liverpool. Double substitution. Coming off, Steve McMahon and Craig Johnston. Coming on, what about this? Mark Lawrence and Paul Walsh. And how many other clubs could bring players like that on as substitutes and still have the likes of John Walk and Nigel Spackman and Jan Mulby in reserve? Testament to Liverpool's huge resources. And here's Byrne, the flag's up. The flag's up. <laughs> Kenny Dalglish's team then, back on top of the first division, having played two games less, and their goals total mounting all the time. 28 in nine games. Just a couple of minutes left here at Anfield, and uh, Queen's Park Rangers, not the first club to find that uh, early season promise can crumble a little when you come to Anfield. Burn. Allen.
Lawrenson. Here's Nickel. Well, they're queuing up in the centre again, looking for number five here. Barnes. Oh, that's a good ball. Or oh, no, he's offside. One of the great individual talents of the English game. Now it would appear harnessed into a really first-rate unit, and the marriage between John Barnes and Liverpool is it would appear being cemented as match follows match. Bannister, Byrne is running on here. This is Byrne! Oh, Grobelar saved it. Bannister! Grobelar saved again. Well, the first chance was a good one. It fell first to Byrne, but Grobelar stopped that, and then he was quick to close down Bannister. And presumably keep his clean sheet. That's exactly what he has done. Because with Ian Rush, an admiring spectator, Liverpool have shown that with John Barnes in the side, they've adjusted and widened their game. John Aldridge kicks up the scoring sequence. Barnes got two. Queen's Park Rangers find that their early season hopes have been somewhat dashed, certainly on this day, by a formidable Liverpool side. They're not the first team to feel the effects of that coming to Anfield. Liverpool go back to the top of the first division, and the question remains in football tonight, who are going to be the first team, if there is a team, to stop them? Rangers took quite a long time to break down, didn't they? Yeah, they defended very stubbornly early on, and I thought they'd done well overall, you know. But at the end of the day, like, we just overran them. Is that really, do you think, the attribute to Liverpool's sheer persistence, or is there something about Liverpool's game that other teams just can't fathom? You can't just mark one sort of player out the game, and, you know, there's always someone else who will come and do something for you. Like, uh, if he tries to mark Barnes, you know, Craig Johnson will, will get in as he did first half. So I think the balance is very good, and um, there's a lot of options available for people, you know. With due respect to yourself, I suppose the name that will be in the headlines tomorrow morning is John Barnes. Oh, yeah. He got two for England and two for yeah, Liverpool today. What, what, what do you make of him as a player, having played alongside him now? He's, he's just a different class, I don't know. He, he can't hold him down, no one can hold him down for 90 minutes, and he's going to get away, as he showed second half there on two occasions, and he, his coolness in front of goal was brilliant. You played the 1-2 with him, which led to his first goal. Um, mm. Liverpool has scored about 28 goals this season in the league. Does that rank as one of the best, do you think? It was a good goal, yeah, it was a good build-up, uh, but I think his second one was a bit, uh, bit special. Similar to the Brazil goal, not as good, but you know, the way he, he just took two fans out and just coolly placed them in the well, I was going to start by saying happy birthday, Jim, but it was rather spoiled for you in the second half. <laughs> yeah, I think so, but um, I still got a lot out of the game and, uh, you know, we're not as downhearted about the result. We, as uh, the scoreline is disappointing for what I thought was a lot of good things in the game. And uh, we had a new team, young players, and our, my thoughts was obviously to try and win the game or get a point and not be defeated. But the main thing from us coming to Anfield was the performance. And uh, but for, for one hour, I thought we were excellent and uh, just got punished on, what, th three minutes from half-time. And uh, the only time Barnes got round the back of us and we got punished for that. And uh, uh, a penalty that was dubious to say the least. I must ask you about that because there was some morning newspaper quotes from you saying that teams that come to Anfield often find that Liverpool get lots of penalties. Kenny Dalglish, in fairness to him, made the point the ball is often in the opposing penalty area. But did today's decision disappoint you? Um, Dean Coney, wasn't it? Well, I, I, I w didn't know that until I spoke to Dean Coney. He was a very honest lad. He should have said it wasn't him, but he did say it was, he did hit his hand, but he was pushing it back. And as I think everybody saw, there were six arms and hands up there and it could have and it could have been anybody's but it, yeah it did it being corners and so uh, it was a penalty finally we started the day by saying can anybody stop liverpool uh, they're now top again they've got two games in hand of you and most of the other clubs top equal 
Top equal, but better on better gold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they score four, the goal difference is bound to get yeah, better, isn't it? Right, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they're they're averaging over three a game, aren't Absolutely, they? Absolutely, yes, yes. I mean, what? I mean, yeah, what? somebody can stop them. Yeah, they can. Yeah. How? I think uh, there there be days when uh, the, it doesn't go for them as it did today.